morning, our Palm Sunday liturgy begins on page 270 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is a reading from the Gospel of John. The great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had it be done to him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name, in of, name Christ. of Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll sing hymn number 154, verses 1 and 5. <laughs> Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly by whole verse, Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16, found, found on page 623 of the Book of Common Prayer. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sigh. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. The chief priests, the rulers, and the people kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that Jesus should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one that had been put into prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man. Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus, there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. I tell you this, today you shall be with me in paradise. When Kay and I first got married, we would play this little game. She would say something like, tell me something you've never told anybody else. And so I would share some deep, dark secret with her, almost like a confession, maybe something I had done or something I had dreamed of doing. But it helped to bond us together as newlyweds. Then one day we were at my parents' house and Kay said, did Bob ever tell you that time that he did such and such? You know, there's some things you don't want your parents to know about. I thought the game had been something you haven't ever told anybody. I guess we all have things in our lives that we may not be proud of, whether we got caught or not. As we were reminded almost 40 days ago, we are dust. We are human, which means we are not perfect. This Lent, I hope, has been a reminder of that for each of us. For me, it is like a scene from our gospel, from the Passion, where the two criminals are paying the price for their misdeeds. Justice must be done. One of them asks Jesus for mercy. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The other criminal simply scoffs. I am all too aware of my own sinfulness, even without Kay telling my parents things that I wish they didn't know. Most of us are all too aware of our sins, our selfishness, our brokenness, our hurts. This is why the passion of our Lord is so meaningful and so necessary. Who cannot hear the passion story of Jesus and not be moved? Not just by a sad story, not just a bit of history, but by what was done for us. What had to be done for us. The passion of our Lord touches me in three ways. First, it reconciles me to God. Not because God has a record of my sins, but because I still have a record of my sins. I know my sins only too well. But I also know the holiness and the righteousness of a loving God. And the two don't mix. There is this chasm between my sins and God's holiness. The passion of Jesus connects that chasm. It reconciles the separation that I feel between me and God. How does this happen? God does not change. God is still a God of justice and mercy, and I am still a sinner. But when I see Jesus pay the price for my sin, how can I continue to refuse to accept his love? Justice has been done. The price has been paid, and love has been freely given. The separation that I often feel by my sin has been reconciled. The second thing that passion means to me is that we have been reconciled to one another. As I begin to accept my own reconciliation with God, then I want to be reconciled with those who have hurt me or whom I have hurt. Forgive me my sins as I forgive those who sin against me. How can I remain in hurt or anger when I have experienced the love and forgiveness of God? When we go to the foot of the cross with those little or big hurts that we have experienced in life, how in the world can we continue to hold on to them? If Jesus can pray for those who nailed him to the tree and those who jeered and shouted, can we not do the same for one another? Forgive them, Father, can be our prayer as we seek to be reconciled with one another. 
And finally, this may be the most important reason the passion is so meaningful to me, is that the passion story reconciles me to suffering. We all can understand the need for reconciliation with God and with one another, but the dilemma of suffering has been a stumbling block for humans since the beginning of time. Why do good people suffer? Why does anybody suffer? This is a Lent that we will all remember because of the suffering the world has experienced through this pandemic that we are still in the midst of. Those who are sick and those who care for them, those who have died and those who are grieving, those who are afraid and those who are suffering from the isolation that we have to put ourselves into for the sake of ourselves and for the sake of others. We have all experienced a type of suffering that we could not have imagined at the beginning of this Lent. We all experience suffering at some level, but we will never fully understand it. The passion of Christ helps us to see that God is willing to suffer with us and for us. The passion of Jesus reconciles us to God through our suffering. The cross of Good Friday can change our attitude about suffering. We may not ever understand it, we certainly do not want it, but we do not have to be afraid of the suffering that this world will sometimes throw at us. God is with us, and we know that Easter is coming. And so as we enter this Holy Week, as we ponder the passion of our Christ, remember that we have been reconciled with God, we can be reconciled with one another, and we are reconciled in our attitude about suffering, for there is nothing we have to fear. What a wonderful and loving Father and Son and Holy Spirit we have and we celebrate this day. Amen. We come now to bring our offerings to God. We have a card that represents those offerings that have been made either online or um, through mail. Um, we continue to bring our offerings to God for the church. And this is Gail's card as well. Gail, go to the end. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thy own forgive me.
prayers continue on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You are saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. Wokwam Wok, Waki, Shelley, Tyson, Lori, Ashley, Katie, Jane, Marcel, Buzz, Haywan, Kim, Nana, Barbara, Myrna, Violet, Jean, Benny, and Mike. For healing for the patients that have tested positive for COVID-19 and peace and comfort for those awaiting test results. For comfort and health for all our nursing home residents and elderly in our community. For the health and safety of all who work at EAMC. For all our community doctors, their office staffs, and urgent care staff, for the grocery workers, postal employees, truck drivers, food delivery folks, for all our children and their parents and their teachers, for all those who are out of work right now, and those who have lost their jobs, for the food bank of East Alabama, community market, and all of our food pantries. 
for all of our churches who still depend on donations and offerings even when they are closed. For health and peace for our entire community and our state. For our nation and all of our leaders. For our entire world. Let us pray together a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for their immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.